Hello, everybody. I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, thank you for coming to my presentation about getting started with Microsoft Bot Framework and learning how to build bots. And my name is Sarah Sexton. I am a technical evangelist with Microsoft. Um, I'm out of Chicago, and I've been working there for a little less than three years. And I'm very honored to be here. This is my second time at November. So thank you, all of you, for joining me. Hmm? Go. Um, so I'm actually probably going to toss the slides aside, and I was planning on doing a live coding demo, and if all else fails, I do have a video to fall back on. Um, I'm going to do the best I can with the presentation format, so if, if it's too blurry to read, please just shout. Okay. I'm, I'm very brave for doing live coding. Mm-hmm. You guys ready to learn about bots? I can't understand you, my friend. I'm sorry. I think the coolest thing about Microsoft's bot framework is that you can build one bot, you can write one set of code and apply it to all these different places. So as you can see here on the slide, I've got email, GroupMe, Skype, Slack, SMS, Telegram, and web chat. We even have Facebook chat messenger now. So it, you can just write one set of code and publish it to all these places. You can continuously deploy it from GitHub up to Azure, and I can do it all in 30 minutes or less. I can build a sample bot right here in front of you guys if the technology works with me. And so the first thing you would want to do is have a GitHub account. So hands up if you guys are familiar with making GitHub repositories. Good, good, good. So that means I can just walk you through what I've got already. So I took the liberty of making Node-Vember bot. OK, now, now the zooming in intensifies. OK, so I took the liberty of a few minutes ago making Node-Vember bot. I made it a public repository, and I gave it a git ignore for ignoring node modules. And uh, I gave it the usual readme. Looks like this. And the reason I want to do this is for uh, implementing continuous integration and continuous deployment up to Azure later. That's the next step. The next step is going to Microsoft.Azure.com uh, or Portal.Azure.com to go to your Azure subscription. So um, there are a few prerequisites for making a bot. You need to have a Microsoft account. That's any email that ends in like Live, Hotmail, or Outlook, one of those. Uh, hands up if you know you already have a Microsoft account. Very good, awesome. So you go to portal.azure.com and you can either have a, a free trial or you can have your own subscription. And if you want a subscription to Azure, the, our cloud platform, just come talk to us at the Microsoft booth and your friendly neighborhood tech evangelist can help hook you up. Um, so the things that you want to do to make a web app that I, like I've done here is you just click new web and mobile and a new web app which I've already done, and I can walk you through those steps again. But what I want to do right now is um, I click deployment options. So once you've already made a web app, the reason I wanted to do this was to give myself uh, an endpoint URL so that my bot could hit that and I could send messages. So my endpoint URL was uh, nodevemberbot.azurewebsites.net. And to skip ahead to the continuous integration, I just clicked on deployment options choose a deployment source, and over here you can see you can do Visual Studio Team Services, OneDrive, local Git repository, GitHub, Bitbucket, Dropbox, or an external repository. So I want to click on GitHub, and over here, choose GitHub as my source. It, I've automatically been authorized as being signed in because uh, I'm already logged into my Microsoft account. So I can choose my project, and it should automatically populate the node Vimber bot up at the top, right there. And I want to keep it on the master branch, and I don't have any performance tests configured. So then I just click the OK button down at the bottom. So that's like three steps of configuring 
automatic deployment from GitHub up to Azure. And as you can see over here, it was successfully set up. That was, I don't know why it says Zoom. Don't pay attention to the Zoom. Pay attention to the green check mark. <laughs> so I think that that's pretty awesome. If you have a GitHub account and you have an Azure account, you can just set this up so easily. And there's going to be a lot of codes here. I'm probably going to delete this whole bot when this demo is over. This is just for demo purposes. So there's going to be a lot of passwords and tokens and secret IDs. I'm, not, I'm choosing not to care about that right now. So we've already made our GitHub repository. We've already continuously deployed it to, uh, to Azure. And now let me just walk you through those steps that's from the beginning. If you click on the green check mark, uh, green plus button, excuse me, and you wait for it to load up, look for web and mobile. Oh. OK. Green plus, web and mobile, web app. That's how you're going to get your like my groovy bot dot Azure website dot net. So you can have an endpoint URL, which you're going to need later. Here's where you enter in the name of your app. So it'd be my groovy bot dot. And then right there, you see it automatically gives you Azure websites dot net. You give it your subscription. I have a Visual Studio MSDN subscription. Um, you can give it a resource group or use an existing one. That's just a collection of resources that share the same lifecycle permissions and policies. You care about that. If, if you were to delete this bot later, uh, you could just delete the whole resource group, and it would get rid of everything that Azure automatically spun up for you. So that would be how you create a web app, and that is how I got, let's see, let's go to nodevemberbot.azurewebsites.net. And I'll zoom in in a second. So I, I've already started pushing the code to it, and I actually don't have an index.html file yet. So it's giving me this blank page. It says, uh, you do not have permission to view this directory or page. But that means that it's working. <laughs> OK. So those are the, the preliminary steps. What's really awesome is if you go to docs.botframework.com, you can find everything you need for building a bot in Node.js as well as in C Sharp. If you want to build a bot in C Sharp using Visual Studio, my coworker Kat Harris has some great videos you can check out on her blog, The Napping Cat. But for, since we're at a Node conference, if you want to build it in Node.js, you can just uh, select Bot Builder for Node.js and Getting Started and it has all the sample code you need to build a, a Hello World bot right here on the page. You can just copy and paste it. So before you go to docs.botframework.com, you should go to dev.botframework.com. That's how you, grilled, you build a great conversationalist. And these bots are getting so fancy. They've got animations, carousels, cards. You can say yes or no. You, you can have pictures, animations. They look really slick. They look really nice. So the, you will want to, uh, after you've signed in with your Microsoft account, you just hit register a bot. And it'll take you to a page that looks a lot like this. Tell us about your bot. You can give it your own custom icon. I named it November Bot. I gave it a handle, so the name is displayed in the bot directory, which is kind of like the, the yellow pages or the phone book of all the bots that have been built and published to Microsoft's bot directory, 35 character limit. The bot handle is used in the URL of your bot. Uh, it can't be changed once you've registered it. Just write an easy description. Uh, first 46 characters displayed on your bot card in the bot directory. The full description is displayed in the bot details. And here's that messaging endpoint I was talking about. So what you do here is you replace HTTP with HTTPS. And Azure takes care of giving you the HTTPS part. Then you give it your groovy URL dot azurewebsites.net. And right here, you, you append to the end slash API slash messages. And I clicked on register the bot to get an app ID. And that's right here. Uh, I'll have to delete this later. But you, you click it to get your app ID and your app password. And if I clicked on Manage This button, um, it would probably sh it's going to show me uh, my application ID, which I put into the source code of building the bot, 
and my application secret. They say, like, make sure you write this secret down. It will only be shown once. So I opened up a notepad to uh, write it down. So you, you, you use it, you can keep it somewhere safe. That goes into your code later when you're building your bot and you're emulating a, a chat conversation with it. OK, so let's go back to the developer portal or for registering the bot. And then you just put your email address. And if you want to use Azure App Insights, you can. But for demo purposes, I'm not. And then all you do is click Register. So if I have everything filled out correctly, I'd have to go double check. Uh, did it sign me out, sign me in? Hmm. But it would usually say, your bot's been registered. OK. Here's a couple of examples of bots I've already registered. Um, I built a meetup bot, a weather bot, and tracery bot. Uh, I'll give you guys a, a demo of tracery bot, because that one's my favorite right now until I build another one. But let's get back to building your first Hello World bot from scratch. OK. So if I go back to my slides, I've got screenshots of what it takes. Uh, if you want a refresher about what, it, what you need or if you want to remember this for later, raise your hand if you have Node.js installed. <laughs> that should be everybody. Raise your hand if you have git commands installed in your command line. Perfect. Uh, raise your hand if you use Visual Studio Code. It's kind of like Notepad++ or Sublime. Wave them around. That is my favorite text editor. Yes, hello, hello new friends. Signups needed uh, a Microsoft account, like I mentioned, an Azure subscription. Um, you can go to botframework.com to find uh, this other stuff. And if you want to make your bots more intelligent uh, and incorporate a little bit of artificial intelligence into them, Microsoft has this LUIS, Language Understanding Intelligence Services, really cool stuff using Microsoft Cognitive Services. And it's, like, it's got machine learning where the bot trains itself and you train it to become even smarter. So let's, let's uh, show you guys a demo of a very simple bot. Now this is one I've already built, uh, and I, I already have it running. I went into, I went into my, my Node.js console. Um, I have a, a script called app.js. I said node app.js to start running it. And this window over here is called the Microsoft Bot Framework uh, Channel Emulator, if you guys can see that. So what it's doing is it's running the bot URL on a local host. So I can, I can pretend like I'm talking to it. And I have the Microsoft app ID over here and the Microsoft app password over here. And if I'm still connected to the internet, nothing broke on the way over here. There, see? It just says, hello world. It's just a bot that says, hello world, back to you no matter what you say. And over here, it says JSON on the side. So you can kind of debug your bot as you go. It's pretty cool, right? Now, OK, let me show you how I kind of got from, from 0 to 60 and how I got this whole bot up and running. So what I did after I made my GitHub repository, because it had a git ignore and a readme in it, I just typed git clone. And the, I took the URL from my GitHub repo with the files in it. And then I changed into that new folder that I just created. and. Um, what I did was I started working from there, because when you clone something, it creates a new folder. That might actually still be in the history, although probably not. No, it doesn't go back that far. So that's OK. So if I type Control-C, Control-C gracefully exits running your program. Ooh. So right here, um, raise your hand if you're familiar with git clone. OK. Perfect. I don't need to show you that step by step. So what that did was it gave me this. Uh, you guys can't see that at all. It gave me um, the, the, it initialized a Git repository, gave me my node modules because I had a Git ignore for node in there. And then what I did was I did npm init. Raise your hand if you know npm init. It's a neat trick. If some of you don't know it, I recommend looking it up. That is a really quick and simple way to get your package.json. And your package.json is what you need for your dependencies. So here you just say, uh, you say the name of whatever you want it to be, like node vember bot. 
version one, you give it a description, it's a sample bot. You make your entry point something like app.js or server.js. Uh, you can leave test commands blank. Uh, the Git repository automatically fills out if you have already cloned it from Git. Uh, you can give the author your own name. You can just leave the license the, as of what it auto-populates, and then you're ready to go. Then you just npm install dash dash save bot builder, and npm install dash dash save restify. Bot builder is the magical can of confetti that Microsoft invented for using npm to install the bot framework, and restify is how you set up a, a rest server so that you can receive and send messages in a bi-directional uh, real-time messaging service. And of course, this is what the screen looks like when you're importing it from NPM. And uh, to get the sample code of how to have a Hello World bot that talks back to you, you just copy-paste it from dev.botframework.com, click on documentation, click on no bot builder for Node.js, getting started, and then you just copy the app.js code. And you can just pop that right into your Visual Studio code or uh, whatever editor you're using. So that is exactly what I did. So here I am in app.js, and it looks just like this. We've got our variables restify and bot builder from npm. This is where we set up our restify server to uh, either listen to a local port or listen, uh, when we put it on Azure, listen to that. And it logs to the console which port it's listening to. So uh, right here is where you create the chatbot. You can see that I have a, a variable called connector that's uh, connected to the chat connector, and it uses the app ID and the app password. And right here, so the universal bot is really the guts. That's the brains. That is how it does everything. Now this, you see it says bot, whoop. It says bot dialogue, and there's a slash that's in apostrophes. That is a, a route. It's a, a function that handles how to talk to anything. And the slash is triggered by everything. So if you say, hey, yo, hello, help, every single thing, it has no intelligence, it has no smarts. All it does is just respond to everything it hears with hello world. And if you check package.json right here, you can see that uh, at the time of this at the time of this demo, I have bot builder 344 and restify 430, and it's hitting the GitHub repository that I made. And that is where all that lives. And so you just save all this code. You go into your, your NPM console. You can type node app.js once you've saved it. Hit enter, and it'll spin up. Right here you can see it says it is Restify is listening to port 3978. And that's how you go into this emulator and start talking to it. And if it doesn't work the first time, just shut the bot emulator window down and reopen it, and usually it works the second time. Let me show you another really fun demo. Uh, and if you wanna save your changes, First, let's authenticate pushing to GitHub. So let me uh, gracefully exit. I say gracefully exit because I didn't used to know how to shut it down, so I would just exit the whole window, like rage quit. <laughs> so I'm going to type git status, and you guys can't see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna type git, git status to see like the status of where I'm at, and you can see that uh, there are two files, app.js and package.json that have been changed, and uh, those are things that uh, I need to add. So I'm going to type git space add space dot to add all the files. Then I'm going to write a commit message with git commit dash m and cre whoops, created package.json and app.js. And those two files were changed and inserted. Now all I have to do is type git push origin master. And with that, it should upload this straight to GitHub. Ooh, after I log in. Sarah Sexton, password. And with that, it logs it to GitHub 
And for example, if I added an index.html, I could go to novemberbot.azurewebsites.net and see the HTML that I decided to maybe create in Visual Studio Code, and that would be my workflow, and it would be very simple. In fact, if you go back to, uh, back to the dev.botframework.com, let's see here. For example, uh, you can pick a channel so look at all these channels. We have a direct line, which is used for some really cool stuff. We have Skype and web chat. So if I click on web chat or like get bot embed codes, over here it says get bot embed codes. You have the option to click Skype or the web chat. Um, and so if you decide to click on a web chat, it would give you uh, a new secret and you'd have to manually place that. And it also gives you the code for an iframe. So I could steal this iframe code, put it into an index.html, and then I would have a nice front end for my bot. And let me close out of that and show you guys. So we've added some new ones lately. If you decide that you want to have a bot that you can send text messages to from a dumb phone instead of a smartphone, you can sign up with Twilio. Uh, you could send it through Microsoft Teams or Kick or GroupMe or Facebook Messenger, all of these Messenger chat applications. And I think that's really cool that you can just write one, a bot once and then have it in all these different places, like one bot to rule them all. And we also have this reusable chat client over here where you can test a connection to your bot. And let me see what happens if I type in a message over here. I'm not sure what's, if this is actually going to be online right now. I'm curious. That's okay. So I want to show you guys my favorite bot that I've made so far. It, I call it Tracery Bot because it uses tracery.js, which is a JavaScript library invented by Kate Compton to randomly generate and fill in, fill in blank words, kind of like filling in a, a Mad Lib story. So I invented a corporate jargon bot. And what it does is uh, it randomly generates corporate jargon. So if you need advice for your business, you can professionally leverage disruptive methodologies for disruptive takeaways. That didn't make any sense. What, what do you mean? Oh, oh, my bad. You should dynamically provide robust metrics after agile technologies. So it's got an adverb, like dynamically, a verb, like provide, uh, an adjective, like robust or collaborative or agile or cutting edge or bleeding edge, uh, a preposition, sort of like via or for or with or after, another adjective, like cross-platform or iterative, and another noun, like scenarios, takeaways, strategies, cloud solutions. So this is my corporate jargon bot, and it is not very smart either. It doesn't really listen to me. It, all it does is respond after I say things like um, anything. So it, all it has is the slash route. You can also take the code for EchoBot. Uh, so this is EchoBot. There's a link to it um, from docs.botframework.com deploying to Azure. So if you want to set up continuous integration, they've got this example, and a tutorial that you can get started with very easily for setting up integration is this EchoBot, so you don't have to make your own GitHub repository. And what EchoBot does is it, it just says, uh, you said blank. Uh, so if you guys want to learn more about making your bots have more intelligence, you can go to lewis.ai. So let's go to lewis.ai. <laughs> right, I need to remember to zoom in again. So lewis.ai is like the artificial intelligence. Welcome to Lewis. And I can walk you guys through a quick tutorial uh, and sort of demystify, like, what is this Lewis? Is it free? How do I use it? Uh, it so this shows you around the web page. So let's say, let's do a, a quick little tutorial. So you just click on a new app button right here. Um, you notice I, I don't think I've logged in. I just went to lewis.ai and it instantly took me to this page, I think. 
Um, or you could just sign, sign in with your Microsoft account. So to create a new Lewis app, you just click on this button uh, to do that, or you could import an existing application in JSON format. To, uh, to edit your Lewis application, the, this one right here has got two underscores and a Lewis sample app. That's a dummy application that will disappear after the tutorial is finished, but if I wanted to click on it, uh, that's how I would edit it. To import utterances, uh, I'll explain what utterances are in a second, but if you have unlabeled utterances that your application should handle, click here to upload them, and those will be available when you edit the application under search and suggest tabs. So an utterance is something that somebody says to express an intent. So if my intent is to say yes, but I say yeah, yup, yep, uh-huh, sounds interesting, sounds good, Okay, those are all different utterances. But if you, the thing about having a bot that is conditioned to listen for exactly certain keystrokes is if somebody types yeah instead of yes, your bot could get confused. This is a good way to handle that and make your bot actually be able to listen to different things that have the same intent. And if you make something, you can just click, ooh, what did I do? Oh, I broke everything. That was weird. Okay. Uh, you can click here to download your work. If, if you've created a list, then you can download it into a JSON file, and that lets you share your application with other developers. So, for example, I could make a list of corporate jargon words, and I already did all the work of creating that list. I can share it with the community by exporting it here and share it with other developers, or check my Lewis application into my version control. It also has access to pre-built Lewis applications uh, that use many of the same models found in Microsoft Cortana. And so you can click this button to try those and look for more API information. That's it for this tutorial, so have fun creating your Lewis applications. So let me show you another example of a bot that might use Lewis. Uh, so let's go to docs.botframework.com. Um, I think I meant to go to dev.botframework.com. They have some really cool examples on the front, like a, a pizza ordering bot, for example. Or over here, this bot that shows you like your most recent orders, so you can say, help me find an order. You placed 36 order, or 38 orders this year. Do you remember when it was placed? And you can sort of talk to it in human language, like, oh, I think it was sometime around March or April, and it had pencils. It can sort of help find what you're looking for. So if I click on the bot directory, I'll be able to show you guys a list of bots that have been already been published. And this, if, you, if you make a bot that you're proud of and you, and you dot all the I's and cross all the T's, you can upload it here. So let's see. There's already a lot in here. Let's see. Uh, the, the Domino's pizza ordering bot is probably way down at the bottom. Let's see. You could also be more productive with your own Microsoft Azure subscriptions, and I think this bot like automatically um, helps you out with your Azure subscription. Say hello. Uh, is that yeah? I think that there's um there's a bot that helps you translate languages. This one's really awesome. So you could learn a new language by using this Lingo Quiz and Translate button, and you can translate. So you could say a word, and it would translate it into a language for you, and you could do that just by uh, talking to it. And these buttons make it really easy to just add it into Slack or add it into Skype. Like, so if I wanted to add this, this language translator bot into Slack, I could just type whatever my, my Slack domain is in here if I had my own team, or if you guys have your own Slack teams that you use for work. Let's see if I can. Oh, I've already reached the integration limit. Uh, I'm kind of, I think I've already got five bots in there. 
but this is, this is how you would just add something into a, a Slack channel, and it, it's really easy. So let me go back to my slides. Okay. Woo. So if you wanted to build a more advanced bot that could actually listen to different phrases uh, instead of just needing to have a condition of I need you to say exactly these words in exactly this order, you can have different routes. So for example, if you wanted to have a conversation like how are you and you wanted, the, you wanted to be able to listen to what they were saying, you could say, I'm not feeling well, or I'm fine, thanks, how are you doing? You would have like one route that's a greeting, maybe one route that's a different response, and it would be this, this waterfall, we call it a waterfall of conversation. The different options are, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties. It's not showing what's on my laptop. Okay. There are dialogue handlers. A waterfall is one where, uh, for example, I wanna say my name to a bot and I want it to remember my name. It c I could have something like called slash profile. And if I say, um, hello, and it says, hello, what is your name? I could give it my name, and it could store that name as a string of text in memory, and then it could spit it back out to me by echoing it and saying, hello, Sarah, how are you today? And so then the waterfall means that if I go back to it, it'll remember my state, and so it's kind of got this, this if-else thing in its head. So if I say hello, it says, if that person has a username in my memory, I'm going to say, hello, username. If not, I'm going to say hello and I'm going to ask them for their username because I don't remember who they are. That's a, a waterfall dialogue. There's also a closure and a simple dialogue, which are basically what uh, the bots I've showed you today are all about. Okay. There. Uh, so in conclusion, bots are very nifty pieces of technology. I've had a lot of fun working with them, and you can use them in your business. For example, there's a, a, an example of haircut on Saturday. I have these times available, 10.30, 11.30, see more. You can click on a card. You can have options of like yes or no. And you can put these in your enterprise or your business to help uh, increase customer satisfaction or decrease the stress that is on the employees who have to deal with lots of questions every day. And you can, you can basically imagine anything. The sky is the limit. Uh, so for the next steps, if you want to find out more about my tracery bot or an, how to build your own node vember bot, you can just uh, check out my blog posts. I have three separate blog posts at aka.ms slash Sarah Sexton about creating bots using the Microsoft Bot Framework and Node.js and Git and Visual Studio and Azure. And do try to check out dev.botframework.com. And you've been a lovely audience, and I hope that you guys were able to see everything. So thank you very much. Do we have time for questions? Does anybody have any questions? Um, your Skype integration, is, does that work for Skype for Business? Skype for Business. Uh, I'm still researching on that particular question. The question was, does the Skype integration work for Skype for Business? And as far as I know, it only works for regular Skype right now. Um, the way that that button is set up is to work for regular Skype. But um, I could look into it and get back to you if you wanted to after afterward. Any other questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>